Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is Tunisia's Foreign Minister, Nabil Amar. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister, for being with us today. My pleasure. Uh, I want to uh, begin uh, with a tragedy. Uh, we just learned uh, today uh, that uh, someone from uh, Benin uh, was killed and four other sub-Saharans were wounded uh, in the city of Sfax. I wanted to have your reaction uh, to what we learned this Monday. Well, before having any uh, more details, I would say that this is a horrible act, and uh, I'm sure every Tunisian is condemning strongly uh, this uh, inhuman uh, behavior. 23 uh, NGOs uh, came out with a joint statement, and uh, they said uh, that uh, there was a climate of impunity of normalizing violence against uh, migrants, and uh, they essentially blame uh, the president, Kais Sayed, we remember some of his remarks back in February for creating such a climate where uh, violence against migrants was in a certain way authorized. What is your reaction to their criticism? I think this kind of uh, reaction has to be completely rejected because it is completely false and it is introducing uh, a very um, great misunderstanding and uh, a great liberty uh, about uh, a fact, uh, a horrible fact that uh, can happen everywhere. Right, but don't you think that uh, the words of uh, your uh, president, uh, where uh, he said that you know migrants were violent, were dangerous, were criminals, uh, kind of created uh, this very climate? I'm not saying that he is saying you should go after migrants, but that this creates a, a, a climate where migrants don't feel safe and might actually feel uh, targeted and are targeted. I can only repeat that I, I really reject this kind of uh, interpretation. Right. The president has absolutely no responsibility with this act and uh, between uh, what he said and uh, this act. Right. Uh, obviously, uh, you're here in France. You met uh, your counterpart, Catherine Colonna, for the first time face to face. Uh, the issue of migration uh, was, uh, I imagine, uh, an important uh, one. Uh, we're seeing the figures uh, since the beginning of the year. Uh, the number of uh, migrants were either uh, arrested or uh, forced uh, from their boats by Tunisian uh, Got a quote has uh, been multiplied by five since the beginning of the year. Italy is saying uh, the same thing. This is a major crisis. How do you address this uh, migrant crisis, especially from a Tunisian standpoint? I mean, uh, I have discussed with my counterpart um, Colonna uh, about this uh, uh, very important topic that uh, is concerning all the, the countries in uh, in the region. And um, I, 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 we talked about the Tunisian proposal through President Kais Saeed's uh, mouth uh, about organizing a conference, a summit uh, on uh, migration. Uh, and uh, he, he had this uh, very um, right expression saying inhuman. Uh, migration, because behind those uh, is about uh, criminal uh, traffics, uh, about uh, human uh, beings. So uh, yes, we discussed this point uh, largely with uh, Minister Colonna, and we were we were very much. Uh, I mean, um, uh, we shared a lot of views, and uh, it was in the framework of our uh, global approach as Tunisia that this uh, problem should be tackled on at a different level and among all the countries that are uh, concerned. Right. So uh, are you optimistic that there will be uh, such a conference in the near future? We have done this uh, proposal through uh, President of Tunisia, Qais Saeed, and we expect that uh, uh, other uh, countries will uh, accept and contribute and will agree with the idea. Right. Uh, obviously, uh, there is one model, quote unquote, that comes to mind is uh, Turkey's agreement with the European Union. Turkey got six billion euros essentially for stopping the migrants coming uh, from uh, mostly uh, from Syria. Is this the model that you have uh, in mind with the Europeans? Do you think Europeans but, want to give you money to stop the migrants, essentially? I mean, I mean you know, every country has its own policy and its own approach. Our approach in Tunisia, again, is to be global and to have all the partners involved uh, in, 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 in a conference and talking in a joint discussions to tackle this problem uh, among uh, all countries that are concerned. So 
every country has its own policy. Right, but you're saying it's not only about stopping the migrants. Definitely, yeah, definitely. It, is, uh, it cannot be the, the middle-term and long-term solution at all. It's about, rather, fixing population in their countries, creating wealth, uh, promoting projects. And this has been the case with the EU, for example. We have some projects that have been very successful, and we could have people uh, back home and uh, investing at home with a small amount of money and, and, and being having a very successful life after be, being uh, le legally uh, in, uh, in other uh, countries. Right. Uh, outside their ho homeland. Right. Uh, the economic situation in Tunisia is, is a difficult one, obviously. Uh, Tunisia has been negotiating for months or years, I should say, with the International Monetary Fund uh, to get some aid, nearly $2 billion. Uh, so it's a significant amount. However, uh, those talks have not uh, borne fruit. I mean, the, it seems that it's they're stuck. Uh, there are some uh, differences. Do you think that those differences uh, can be negotiated and that this money can be dispersed to Tunisia in the near future. And the discussions are going on uh, with our Are they going well? IMF That's and, my point. And our partners. Uh, since they are going on, they are going well. Uh, they are not stopped. And uh, and now the partners we have the uh, I mean we have after we have explained to them all the constraints that we have they are accepting the idea of the red lines that uh, the president uh, of Tunisia has uh, evoked uh, many times uh, stability of the country protection of the the poor uh, people in in Tunisia and and. Um, and fragile uh, people in, in Tunisia, and in, and the solution should be the agreement should be in the framework of this those red lines, right? Which includes maintaining subsidies, especially uh, many subsidies for uh, poor people. It's about stability of the country and protection of their purchase, right? Uh, power. Right. Um, since uh, mid-April, Rashid Khanouchi, the leader of uh, the Anakhta party, uh, is incarcerated uh, for criticizing, essentially saying that Tunisia could face a civil war if parties from the left or from political Islam like his uh, were uh, banned. Uh, uh, other uh, leaders uh, or prominent voices from the opposition are in jail. This has prompted the United States, Europe, to vividly uh, criticize uh, Tunisia for not uh, respecting political uh, rights. What is your response to such criticism? Those are political um, positions, political statements. That you don't accept. And political uh, maybe agendas. But uh, we in Tunisia are only applying the law, Tunisian laws, in conformity with what our people have voted. But when human rights groups say this is a political vendetta, this has nothing to do with the rule of law, this is essentially uh, stifling the opposition, putting them behind bars. They, they are responsible for what they are saying. We cannot ban them for saying that. But we are in Tunisia applying our laws. They are Tunisian laws. The issue of uh, terrorism, uh, there was uh, a, a, an attack on, in Jerba uh, recently. Um, we don't really know uh, what happened, but what, what we do know is that some people uh, were killed. Uh, is the investigation uh, making uh, progress? Because we haven't heard much about where the probe is heading. Uh, the inquiry is going on. Right. We will know about uh, the results of it uh, until we don't have the results of it, we cannot qualify what happened. And right. this can happen, this kind of act, inhuman act, can happen again everywhere. Right, because so, so some people say, you know, there's an unwillingness to say that it was terrorism, that it was targeting uh, it Jews. And, uh, it, it, it has to be qualified by the justice. We cannot qualify such an act uh, like that. It has, justice has to, uh, to qualify this act. Right. Uh, is terrorism still a concern uh, for Tunisia? In recent days, uh, there was an announcement that a suspect allegedly belonging to Islamic State was stopped uh, with weapons, uh, maybe plotting uh, different uh, uh, attacks. I mean, we haven't seen such announcements for a long time. This means that still... Every country, including Tunisia, has to be vigilant because this kind of operation can happen everywhere, anytime. So it's about 
the security state and the, the, all the forces of the, the, the country to be aware of that and to, to be vigilant. Right. Uh, but uh, are you getting uh, all the cooperation you need uh, from uh, neighbors, from uh, Europe? Or do you think uh, because uh, there was COVID, there are other issues uh, that maybe there's a lack of attention maybe uh, to the terrorist uh, threat in your country and maybe in neighboring countries? No, I think we have good cooperation with all the partners in that, in that domain. And uh, we are always um, very uh, um, positive when it comes to struggling together with all uh, other countries and partners against this uh, uh, t the terrorist um, behavior or attack. Right. Just very last question. Are you concerned about the uh, the chaos in Libya? Uh, for years now, there's been chaos in uh, neighboring Libya. Uh, this crisis seems to be going on forever. Of course, it has an impact on Tunisia, and uh, but uh, but we uh, in Tunisia are all the time. Uh, making our contribution in order to to solve to help the Libyans to solve uh, their problems between themselves without foreign intervention and uh, in a way that uh, the unity of the country is uh, saved and that they can prosper in their own uh, frontiers in peace because uh, the two countries are very much linked including economically uh, so it is important for us. Yes, but it's far away still. A solution seems to be far away. We have to progress. And we Tunisians are all the time helping them to progress. Nabil Abmar, I want to thank you uh, very much for appearing here on the France 24 interview. And thank you all for watching it.